questions here. Um, let's see. Hi, Nina. Just had a good check in about your comps. We've approved you doing an independent project. Your first job is to find the right script and super ASAP. Great if you can continue to read some plays and let us know when you find the one which might be a good fit. Okay, uh, great. This is great. Um, wow, okay. Uh, I could do, um, where was I? I? I don't know. I could do Tennessee Williams, maybe, or, or Sam Shepard. Or um, Mina Bogavitz, yeah, she has great plays. Um, or, okay, okay, what do I want to do? Um, I want to talk about past and current issues in the Balkans. Um, I want to talk about facing the past. I want to talk about experience of womanhood in the Balkans. Um, okay, let's see, a new play exchange. I must have something. Password. Okay. Filter by ethnicity. Um, Serbian, Slavic. Our results found. Uh, okay. Um, filter by region. Balkans, Eastern Europe. No results found. Um, okay. Um, filter by. Uh, I don't know. Russia, anything, anything Eastern European. Um, oh, there's something. And of course, it's about interference in 2016 elections. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be, maybe it doesn't have to be a script. Maybe it can be just so someone's actual words, someone, someone's actual testimony that talks about the things I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, Mama, Mama. Hey, I'll snatch that clip of Krabba Sama the spammy movie diplomacy. Missy mean the individual me talk. Well, I don't know what to do because I want to talk about the post war situation in the Balkans as well as about the experience of being a Balkan woman, necessity of facing the past, all, the, all those things. Do, do you have any ideas? Mira for one. Panesman. Možda Mira Furlan Pismo Sugrajanima Translation Mira Furlan wrote this public letter, the letter to my co citizens, in November 1991. I hereby wish to thank my co citizens who have joined so unreservedly in the small, marginal, and apparently not particularly significant again campaign against me. Although marginal, it will change and mark my whole life, which is of course totally irrelevant in the context of death, destruction, devastation, and blood chilling crimes within which our life now goes on. This is happening, however, to the one and only life I have. It seems that I've been chosen for some reason to be the filthy rag everyone uses to wipe the mud off their shoes. I'm far too desperate to embark on a series of public polemics in the papers. I do, however, feel that I owe myself and my city at least a few words. Wow, this is it. I thought that. Um, this is it. It's a story about the Balkans. It's a story about what propaganda can do in the Balkans or anywhere in the world, really. It's a story about facing the past. It's a story about a Balkan woman by a woman. Finally, it's a story about Mira Furlan. Yeah, and I don't think anyone did that. I don't think anyone told her story, the story of her exile. And now that she just passed, this can be a way to honor her. Yeah, this will be a way to honor her. Have you heard of Mira Furlan? No? Okay, hold on. Mira Furlan was a famous Yugoslav actress of Croatian descent, widely known across all six republics of Yugoslavia for her roles in theater, TV, and film. You may know her as Danielle Rousseau from TV series Lost, as well as Delenn from sci-fi show Babylon 5. Mira Furlan was also one of the most principled artists and people in the horrific 1990s in the Balkans. 
She was against the war and she was a voice of reason and peace at the time. And she was punished for it. Um, you see, all of this was at the time when the breakdown of Yugoslavia started and when politicians from her homeland, Croatia, and politicians from my homeland, Serbia, started a war between the peoples. Mira refused to participate in any of that. She refused to participate in inter-ethnic hatred fueled by the war. She refused to give up her Serbian friends and colleagues and her Serbian partner. She continued to live between the two warring cities, between Zagreb, Croatia and Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, she even appeared at a theater festival in Belgrade and as a result, she was fired from Croatian National Theater, considered a traitor by her home city, Zagreb, Croatia, and even threatened with lynching from some of her compatriots. This is the context in which she and her husband, Goran, packed their, their four suitcases and their whole lives and left for the US. This is also the context in which Mira Forlan wrote Pismo Sugrajanima, a letter to my co-citizens. I think it's the past time we hear her in her own words, verbatim. Listening to my answering machine to the incredible quantities of indescribably disgusting messages from my co-citizens, I long to hear at least one message from a friend. Or not even a friend, a mere acquaintance, a colleague. But there was none. Not a single familiar voice. Not a single friend. Nonetheless, I am grateful to them. I am grateful to those kind patriots who promised me that I would be massacred and, and to those colleagues, friends and acquaintances who, by remaining silent, are letting me know that I cannot count on them anymore. I am grateful to all my colleagues in the theater with whom I've played Držić, Molière, Turgenev and Shah. I am grateful to them for not even trying to understand, let alone attempting to vindicate my statement concerning my appearance at the Bita Festival in Belgrade. That the statement in which I tried to explain that taking part in that production was for me at the time a defense of our profession which must not and, and cannot put itself in the service of any political or national ideas, which must not and cannot be bound by any political or national limits, because it is simply against its nature, which must, even at the worst of times, establish bridges and, and ties. In, in its very essence, it is a vocation which knows no boundaries. I know that all this talk about cosmopolitanism of art may seem inappropriate at a time like this. I know it may seem out of place to swear to pacifism, to swear to love and to the brotherhood of all peoples while, while people are dying, while children are dying, while young men are returning home crippled and mangled forever. How can I say anything which won't sound like an ill-fitted nonsense? at a moment when for absolutely unfathomable reasons Dubrovnik is being threatened. The city where I played my favorite role, Gloria. But I have no other way of thinking. 
I cannot accept the war. I, I cannot force myself to hate. I, I cannot believe that weapons, killing, revenge, hatred, that such an accumulation of evil will ever solve anything. E each individual who accepts the war is in fact an accessory to the crime. Must he then not take part of the guilt for the war? A part of the responsibility? In any case, I think, I, I know, I, I feel that it is my duty, the duty of our profession to build bridges, to, to never give up on cooperation and community, not the national community, the human community. And even when things are at their very worst, as they are now, we must insist till our, till our last breath on building and sustaining bonds between people. This is how we pledge to our future. And one day it will come. For my part, until recently, I was willing to endure all manner of problems in terms of transportation, communication, finances, to trek the 20 hours across Austria and Hungary because I could no longer just travel directly from Zagreb and Belgrade. Uh, I was willing to use risky, even dangerous modes of travel just to keep holding my performances in the two warring cities, just to keep appearing at 7.30 p.m. on stage with my Zagreb or my Belgrade colleagues and to alternate between Corneille and Turgenev for the sake of continuity, for the sake of something that would outlive this war and this hatred that is so foreign to me. Time and time again, I, I was willing to make my life a symbol of a pledge to our future, which must be waiting for us until that day when some ardent patriot finally does slaughter me, as many have promised to do. I was willing and I will still be willing to undertake any and all efforts if, if the hatred hadn't suddenly overwhelmed me with, it, with its horrendous ferocity. Hatred welling from the city I was born in. I'm appalled by the force and, and magnitude of that hatred, by, by its perfect unanimity, by, by the fact that there was absolutely nobody who could see my gesture as my defense of the integrity of the profession. I, any decision not to participate would in the festival would have meant betraying a performance I had worked on, on under the most difficult circumstances during the mass anti-war, anti-Milosevic regime protests, dur during the March 9th Belgrade tanks, dur during the daily threats of military coup. It's terribly sad when one is forced to justification without having done anything wrong. I no longer have any decisions to make. Others have decided for me. They have decided that I must shut up, give up and vanish. They have abolished my right to come home to my city. They have abolished my right to return to my theater and act in my performances. Someone decided I should be fired from my job. Thank you, Croatian National Theater. Thank you, my colleague Dragan Milivojevic, who signed my dismissal slip. I, I know that I'm just one of the many, simply part of, of a surplus workforce. Perhaps they needn't have hurried so in, in firing me, but perhaps things have would simply taken care of itself with more decency and dignity, not so cruelly. Of course, this is not a moment for tenderness, but. But won't someone out there have to be ashamed of this? And will that someone necessarily be me, as my fellow actors try to convince me in their interviews? How many friends, well, actually, can, can the war really be used as justification for every single nasty bit of filth we commit against our fellow men? I ask my friends in Zagreb, who are now silent, while well, well, at the same time they condemn Belgrade for its silence. 
it, it is hard to speak without bitterness. I would like to be able to do that because we should love our enemy. I wish we all could. To whom am I addressing this letter? Who will read it? Who will even care to read it? Everyone is so caught up by the great cause that small personal fates are not important anymore. But how many friends do you have to betray to keep from committing the only socially acknowledged act of betrayal, the betrayal of the nation? How many petty treacheries, how many dirty little tricks must one do to remain clean in the eyes of the nation? I am sorry, but my system of values is different. For me, there have always existed and will always exist only human beings, individual people, and those human beings, God, how few of them there are, they will always be exempt from any generalizations of any kind. I, unfortunately, shall never be able to hate all Serbs or even understand what that really means. I shall always, perhaps until the moment the kind threats on the phone are finally carried out, hold my hand out to an anonymous person on the other side. The person who is as desperate and as lost as I am, who is sad, bewildered and frightened. There are such people in this city where I write my letter. <clears throat> Belgrade, the city my love took me to. I'm feeling almost indecent to mention these days. I reject, I, I refused to accept such a crippling of myself and my own life. I played those last performances in Belgrade for those anguished people who are not Serbs, but human beings, human beings like me. Human beings who recoil before this monstrous farce in, in which dead heads are flying. It is to these people, both here and there, that I'm addressing my words. Perhaps someone will hear me. Punishment meted me by my city, my only city and my theater, my only theater, the only theater I ever felt was mine it is a punishment I feel I do not deserve. I, I was working in the ways I have always felt I had to work, believing in people and in our vocation, which has to bring people together, not tear them apart. I will never be able to give up my Belgrade friends the way some of my colleagues have because I do not feel that these people have in any way brought about the catastrophe which has afflicted us. And just as I will not turn my back on my Zagreb friends, not even those who turn their backs on me, I will try in every way possible to understand their, their fear, their panic, their even their hatred, but I plead for the same dose of understanding for me. Regardless of whether we will live in one or five or 50 states, let us not forget that people, each individual, regardless of which side of this wall of ours this person happens to be on. We're all here by accident. <laughs> We're this or that by accident, so there must be something more than that. Mustn't there? I 
I'm sending this letter into a void without an inkling of who will read it and how or in how many different ways it will be misused or abused. Chances are it will serve as food for the eternally hungry propaganda beast. Perhaps someone with a pure heart will read it after all. I will be grateful to that someone. My God, all that she went through. And she received no apologies from anyone and not until she passed in January. And I mean, they had the time that this was 30 years ago. Oh, I guess the theater which fired her did post an obituary. Let's see. Um, yep, they completely gloss over the injustice done to her. With the hearts of billion stars, molecules that do not understand politics or policies or differences. Oh, let's see, there is an apology at least offered from the head of the drama department. Let's see. Oh, it's on Facebook. Um, yeah, I mean, this is nice and all, but it's on Facebook. And as he says, too, it's too late to apologize to the dead. I mean, it all makes me so mad the way Zagreb nor Belgrade protected her. I mean, to punish someone for being a voice of reason and peace at the time is to effectively punish or prevent everyone else who even thought about speaking up against the war. And billion years, we foolish molecules forgot who we are and where we came from. I mean, if only we provided more space for people like her, then maybe the horror of 1990s could have been prevented or, or at least reduced or... Uh, Nina? Or even if we provide more space for people like her today, then sustainable peace will be possible because... Nina? These conflicts have only been frozen and we formally live in peace, but that peace is so fragile and, and I'm worried and scared about the future. I just wish I could talk to her. Nina, you can. Time and space is nothing but an illusion. Just open your mind to the possibility and let me assist. This is the place. This is the place. It's a I guess. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, it's you. Um, well, <laughs> is this really? I, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm in your home. I, I, I don't really know how I. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, can I ask you some questions? I have so many questions. Uh, so uh, where, where do I even start? So, okay, so after the letter, what, what happened after? I, I know you and your husband, Goran, uh, packed your bags and you landed in New York and that you worked for some time as a waitress and a tra translator. So how was the new beginning? Uh, <laughs> that's a long story and I'm, I'm not sure I have the energy. Uh, it was hard. Uh, you have to start all over, start from scratch again. Um, uh, but I tend not to cry over my own fate. I mean, uh, even though being a migrant was hard, I was, I was educated and I was white. Um, so it wasn't as hard for me as it was for refugees from Syria or, or Africa. Right, um, and then you eventually did return home, uh, I mean, to your home profession, acting. And so you moved from 
New York to what is now your home, LA, uh, and you played in well-known and beloved shows, Lost, where you played Daniel Rousseau, you also played in Babylon 5, you played Delenn, um, and uh, so I, I, I don't even know where to start, but I know you remained concerned about the state of the world. So, so where do you think we're headed? Well, where in particular is the U.S. headed? I guess based on your experience of living here for, wow, the last thirty years of your life. Um, the world is headed towards greater and greater inequality be between the extremely rich and extremely poor. Um, American capitalism. The the less money you have, the more you have to pay yourself, and then the more money you have, uh, the more is given to you. Um, it, it's it's fascinating that young people in the U.S. are interested in what what socialism is, uh, but but that is not presented to them as an option. Um, they have to look it up, research it. Um, you, you, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders, who's, who's a great supporter I am, he called himself socialist in the middle of the U.S. where that is a dirty, dangerous word. Um, th that was enough for me to believe more in, in that idea. And of course, it's a different story why uh, that couldn't have happened. why he couldn't have been elected right yeah i was i was actually studying studying in la at the time and i remember thinking hoping that maybe just maybe someone like bernie who dedicated his whole life to fighting inequality to curbing the difference between the extremely rich and extremely poor could actually win i mean knowing what we know now about unwavering big money politics in the US, it's it's clear, as you say, why that couldn't have happened, why he couldn't have been elected. Um, I mean, it's weird that only two choices remaining were Trump or Biden. I, I, I always thought it was strange to give people only two choices, corner them like that and call it a democracy. Um, all this to say, I don't know, it's fascinating how there's so much work to be done for democracies to truly function, not, not just here in the Balkans, but also the US. Um, and that is the case with all kinds of inequalities. Say, for example, inequality between men and women. Have you ever personally felt it here or there? Um, yes, <laughs> I, I always saw the injustice. Uh, I too, like many women, um, learned from childhood to not see the dirty sexualized looks, to, to um, not uh, hear demeaning remarks, to not consider the insults. Um, Right, and I also remember hearing you talk about the terror of youth, weaponized especially against women uh, in, in the movie industry. Uh, would you say it still exists? <laughs> um, American producers wouldn't agree, nor would the Balkan ones, that a, a terror of youth exists. Um, well, although not as strong here as it is in the US, it's, it's dominant there. Um, you, you get a sense that the world is a bit afraid of women my age. <laughs> right, which is the golden age of 65, correct? So why do you think they're afraid? Um, why is that the case? Uh, fear. Fear. Um, they don't really know what to do with us. <laughs> We're not this or that, so they don't really know. Um, also the fear of death. Uh, fear of aging. Uh, people don't want to confront an aging face on the screen because it, it reminds them of their own. They don't want to see the, the wrinkles and aging because they, they know that will happen to them as well, to, to all of us. It, it's inevitable. Right, so the last time you felt something was in 2014? Um, also, th thinking thinking now uh, to the inequality thing and sexual harassment and, and um, I mean, throughout my, my youth and life, uh, sexual harassment was, was the air we breathed. It was something you needed to accept as a fact, otherwise you couldn't survive. Um, I mean, all of us, we, we 
mostly did everything we could, um, you know, so, to protect men from their own self-embarrassment. Um, I mean, it's incredible. Um, it was more important that, that the oppressor is not uncomfortable than for, for example, slap him. Um, that way, all of us, men and women, actually supported the, the sexist system that's oppressing women. Right, yeah. Just just thinking about going back to 1991, do you, do you think that you being a woman played a part in, in the way you were so vigorously attacked? Um... No, yes, uh, I was a perfect target. Oh, well, first, um, I was the one who was traveling around and working on both sides, and, and, and they tried to kill that idea. That, that was what propaganda was working on, and, and in which propaganda was incredibly successful, fantastically successful, we have to admit. Um, so, so uh, a perfect target, um, first, mm, Nothing, no one stood behind me, not even my theater, my, my profession, my, my colleagues, nothing protected me and no one. Um, then woman, be, being a woman, being a woman in this region, being a woman in any region, um, being a visible woman is, is a target by itself. Uh, then being an actress, um, actress, suspicious profession, always has been. Um, yeah. Right. It, it really does seem like sexism and misogyny played a huge part in, in the kind and the amount of media harassment you face. I mean, uh, even after you left to the US, a uh, weekly newspaper continued to write about you in a series of articles, and they titled this um, series uh, Difficult life of an easy woman, uh, the disgusting title, right? No further comment needed, but I, I am still curious to hear your thoughts about it all. Um, uh, at the time, uh, uh, this is important to say, um, at the time, the, the time of war, uh, it was dangerous to, to write such things about me. I mean, it, it was a call for lynching. Nothing more, not, I mean, nothing more, but, but nothing less. Um, th those were messages with, with uh, horrific content. It wasn't funny, it wasn't easy, it wasn't an easy genre. It, wa it wasn't just some innocent tabloid gossip you don't even feel the need to react to. I mean, um, my home address was, was published in the papers and... Um, um, it was dangerous. Pe people intentionally did and published dangerous things. And not just against me. I, I mean, this was nothing unusual. Hate speech was, was ruling at the time. Right. Yeah, indeed. The, the hatred and... I don't know, but also the audacity. To, to Again, stuck on that, how they titled it difficult life of an easy woman like there's something to be said there about the fact that in peace but especially in war a woman who refuses to advance nationalist agendas is, is not just labeled a traitor but as a right as a promiscuous um, immoral person in many many ways uh, I, I mean these articles were, were horrible um, and these journalists were misogynistic. They, they uh, listed and judged your nude scenes in film. They tried to count up how many romantic partners you've had, as if that shows anything. Uh, they, they dared to diagnose you and then shame you for your mental health issues. Uh, they, they analyzed your behavior at your mother's funeral. Uh, all this to, to discredit you. Um, or, or worse, right? They, they really framed you as, as this woman who hates Zagreb, who is an enemy within. Um, uh, all this to say, I guess, is how do you look back on all that now? Have you forgiven them? Yeah, uh, th those were some perverse uh, actions done by, by people I knew, pe people with whom, whom I've had coffee with before. 
Um, I mean, we were all more or less the same generation. Uh, I did not forget about it. I, I don't believe in forgetting. I don't believe in this idea that time and forgiveness can heal all wounds. I, I believe in remembering. I think we should all remember. I think that is a responsible way of life um, for every human. <laughs> I'm often accused of being a vengeful person, that American phrase, move on, let's move on. Yes, yes, I agree. I'm all for that. New beginnings, cooperation. Uh, I, I support that all together, but, but, but not everything was the same. And not everyone was the same. I, it's not all so gray and muddy. Um, some people are directly responsible for what they did and they should be held accountable. Um, but there's no time for self-pity. We're, we're moving on. My case is a minor case. Um, people were dying. Horrible things were happening. That's, that's what we need to think about. Right, but they took your home. I, I mean, your apartment in Petrova Street, Zagreb, the one you inherited from your grandma, they, they took it away from you and then it took a court process, a long one, to bring it back. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, that process lasted for 17 years. What, what can one even say about that? Um, where do such things happen? Uh, <laughs> The, the lawsuit was even titled City of Zagreb versus Mira Furlan, I mean, metaphorical, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, very, very. Um, I try not to see it that way uh, on the good days. <laughs> um, it would be worth investigating that thing called City of Zagreb. Who are those people? What do they think? I don't know what I did to deserve this, but maybe those people know. Right, and so after this, it would be 10 years actually, after this, after your letter and after your exile, and you would be back in Croatia for the first time. You would be in Brioni Islands and you would play Medea, correct? Um. Yeah, I, I needed 10 years to come back. I, I still felt it so much. It, it all hurt so deeply. And the following years, you played, you starred in Serbian movies, uh, Dishi Duboko, Vrati uh, Se Rode, Turneja. Um, but nothing really changed, or so it seems. You received no apologies from your homeland, Croatia. Um, you were still fighting to get your apartment back. So. I guess my question is, out of all, all of it, everything, what is Mira Forlan most proud of in her career? <laughs> Surviving. Um, I, I don't identify with Mira Forlan. That, that's a character, a fiction, like, like a, a, anything else. Um, uh, I'm outside of that, but surviving. And if you had to put it in a nutshell, how did the breakdown of Yugoslavia influence your life? You broke it into pieces. Would you like to come back? Come back to what? There's, um, there's no coming back in that regard. I, I tried, I, I was in Rijeka, I did a play a few times, but I need different things now. I, I no longer need to be a part of the clique. Um, I don't no longer need to belong, be employed by a theater. Um, there is no coming back in that regard. Um, what's left is only the immigration within to try to live a life that's authentic and, and honest. Right, so you talked a lot about non-belonging, both in the Balkans and in the U.S. Do you still feel that way? Uh, <laughs> I, 
I'm a migrant on, on this planet. I, I never feel like I, I got settled anywhere. Um, but isn't that the most natural state? Um, I'm a traveler and an observer. We're, we're all here just temporary and we cling onto some constants and some security and definition, but I am a traveler. Um, and that marginal, transitory, wallflower position is a position of freedom, the one I, I always cared about. Right. But don't you get tired explaining where you're from to people in the U.S.? <laughs> to je strašno naporno i nakon nekog vremena čovjek naprosto odusta jer vidiš da to ljude naprosto ne zanima otprilike ih nešto zanima kao mm, razna pitanja mislim jesi ti ova koju smo bombardirali ili <laughs> um, various reactions really asking me um, you know um, are you the ones we bombed or, or the other? I mean, this is incredibly exhausting and after a while you get tired of explaining because you see that people don't really care about that. They're not really interested. They want to know something a little bit, just approximately. Um, and that American wish to, to intervene at all costs. Um, I had this conversation um, you know, we must do something about it. Yes, well, what, I ask? Well, I don't know. Well, I say perhaps we should learn about it first, do some research, huh? see what's going on. Um, no, we must react. I mean... Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I feel that. Uh, well, um, when I was just a baby, uh, Speaking of interventions, uh, US-led NATO coalition intervened, meaning bombed my country, then Serbia and Montenegro over Kosovo, and civilian targets were bombed, uh, my city was bombed, and my family, like many others, had to flee. Um, bridges were bombed, people's homes, um, hospitals, even hospitals with newborns, which is all a violation of international humanitarian law. And I mean, right, how do you intervene to stop atrocities by committing more of them uh, against a population which, not, which is not even involved in the conflict? I mean, those are civilians. Um, and also during that 78 bombing campaign, NATO bombs did not just kill civilians in Serbia and Montenegro, they killed Albanian refugees, the, the population US was claiming to protect. So, um, it doesn't add up. I guess all this is to say you were right. Weapons killing such an accumulation of evil doesn't really solve anything. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Um. I ja sam sve žrtve doživljavala kao svoje, kao naše. Um, I also perceived all victims as mine, as ours. Um, that at the time was considered and is still considered to be an unacceptable and traitorous stance. But I'm only interested in people. I don't have much interest for countries, although history is always written by countries, not people. Yeah, but your letter, I mean, your letter is, is, you left us with this piece of history that is not written by any state or country. You, you left us with this testament of, of what propaganda did to, to silence everyone in the Balkans who was against the war at, at the time. So thank you for, for that piece of history and for everything. Thank you.
Later in her life, Mira returned to music and in LA she recorded an album Songs from Movies That Have Never Been Made. Among things, this has inspired my own conversations with Mira that I've never had. She did actually say all the brilliant things you've heard from her today, uh, just not to me, unfortunately. On January 20th this year, aged 65, Mira Furlan passed on. In our language, Mira, her name, means peace. She was a symbol for peace and will always be one. Thank you for sharing a part of my story, Nina. Let me just share one more thing before I go. Delenn was always one of my favorite characters. You can join me if you'd like. All life, every life, we're all born as molecules with the hearts of billion stars. Molecules that do not understand politics or policies or differences. Now we're a billion years. We foolish molecules forgot who we are and where we came from. Desperate acts of ego. We give ourselves names and fight over lines and maps and pretend that our light is better than everyone else's. The flame reminds us of the beat of those stars that lives on inside us. That voice that tells you you should know better. The flame also reminds us that life is precious. Each flame is unique. When it goes out, it goes out forever. And there will never be another quite like it. So many candles. Went out in the Balkans between 1990 and 2000. Serb, Bosniak, Croat, Albanian, Roma. And there will never be another quite like them. I wonder sometimes if we can see anything at all.